My name is Paul Malalu, and the filmed lesson is from a senior level math course called Advanced Mathematical Decision Making. In this lesson, students are given a real life scenario, and each student is given a different scenario where they are going to budget and then pay bills and be prepared for unexpected life expenses. And this is part of our financial literacy unit. All right, so our financial literacy unit that we've been working through, today we're gonna to focus primarily on the budget component. So if you guys will log into Nearpod, be sure if you do not have the code, it's still gonna remain up there uh, for the duration of the lesson. So we're gonna start with a little ball toss questions. All right, Mason, you ready? Here we go. All right, right hand, right thumb. What's the closest number? Three. All right, what is an example of a want? Something you want. A new car, there you go, okay. All right, so a car is something, you know, you could argue might be a need, but a new car, uh, it's probably a want. All right, Juan, you ready? Yep. Uh, it's all right, what's the closest one, five? Uh, one. One, all right. What's an example of a fixed expense? Uh, your rent for the month. Rent, yeah, there you go. Well done, Juan, nice, nice. All right, let's get someone on this side of the room here. Oh, yeah, Covino. Uh, I'd say seven. Seven? All right, if you get or earn money, do you usually spend it or save it? I save it. You save it? Hey, good man right there, good man. All right, let's get somebody in the back here, in the back, yes, here it comes. All right, what you got, right hand, right thumb? Six. Six, all right. What do you find hard to resist spending money on? Close. Close, okay, fair enough. All right, let's get one more, let's get one more. Who's ready, oh yeah, you're ready. Right hand, right thumb. Seven, all right, we, we had that one. Let's drop to six, uh, let's go eight. Give an example of a big expense that you've had to save money for. College. College, look at you, all right, you're prepared, you're prepared. All right, so what we're gonna jump into here is uh, the idea of the lesson. So have you guys ever eaten, you know, when you were a kid, the popsicle stick that had the joke on it at the end, you got the popsicle, all right, so we've got some, uh, you know, you can, you know, these are, give or take as far as the quality here, but uh, what is the worst name for a hair salon? Brace yourself. Budget cuts, hey, all right. Uh, how do you start a revolution on a budget? This one's kinda, you gotta know another name for a revolution. Anybody know the other kind of fancy French name for a revolution? If we don't, it's fine. It's, you know, this is uh, out of context. All right, if that one's called a coup. So let's tie this one in here. If it's a coup, how do you start a revolution on a budget? A coupon. Hey, all right. Time is like a mountain. It can be very difficult to budget. All right. So that's enough popsicle stick jokes. So we got one last riddle. What does someone who makes $750 an hour, someone who makes $7,500 a month, and someone who makes $7.5 million a year all need? A budget, all right. So you got a question that you guys are gonna answer uh, in just a moment. So this we've been over as far as the, the standard and what we're gonna cover here. But for, for today, we're focusing on the decision-making component. So we wanna make sure this is real life stuff where you get you know, a scenario that you are saying, uh, is there, you know, how can I take this money that I've earned, invest it, spend it, borrow it, uh, if I need to potentially take out a loan at the bank station, you know, what, how do, what's the process there? So that's our focus for today and that you are able to do that is our learning target. All right, so take a minute. I'll hide the names here. Uh, what is your plan after you graduate high school? And I'll kind of tie in why we're asking this question in, in a budget lesson. Uh, if you're not sure, it's okay. There's, you know, just kind of go what you think your uh, general plan is for after you graduate high school. Roll this to the back there. Oh, almost, perfect, perfect. All right, so our answers are rolling in here. We're rolling in as far as our percentages. All right, we got a couple more. There we go. All right, so it looks like 36% attend a four-year university, 18% attend a technical college, 13% will be doing something uh, other than that, 13% straight into the workforce, and 9% join the military. All right, we're at 41% of the fans, everybody. All right, now the question, though, so this is good that you guys have you know, a, a plan in mind of uh, kind of what, you, what you're going to do come May after you guys walk across the stage. Uh, 
How would that affect budget in the short term, depending on which one you chose? How would that affect your budget in the short term? Like if you went the 41% that said, I'm going to a four-year university, uh, how would that affect your short-term budget? What was that? You're going to be in class? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah? Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so uh, if you are going to be in class and college, are you going to be working you know, 40, 50 hours a week? No? So you probably would, in the short term, have less money, right? Uh, you know, just because you're going to be a college student trying to make your way through, you know, it's, it's hard work. You might have a part-time job or even a full-time job and trying to do both. Uh, but if you go straight into the workforce or if you go in the military, something like that, uh, you'll have money sooner. Uh, but if you're talking about you know, the long term, how might your budget change depending on if you went to a technical school, a four-year military, or straight into the workforce? Oh, so that might affect your budget, too, is your, your student loan debt. Okay, uh, But on average, if you do go to college and get a degree, you're going to be making more long term. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, you got to say, OK, what's the give and take here? So all this stuff is good, because that's what budgeting is all about, is the give and take of you know, what uh, money is going to be allocated in one spot or another spot, and kind of figuring out what is going to be best uh, in the, the short term and the long term. All right, consumer debt is broken up into four main categories. Mortgage debt, what's a mortgage? What's that a payment on? OK, your house, your home. All right, so uh, an auto, that one's pretty straightforward. Student loans and credit card debt. According to financial experts, eight in 10 Americans have some form of consumer debt, uh, which is you know, a pretty substantial percentage there. I mean, we're talking 80%. Average debt in America is $38,000, not including a mortgage payment. If you include the mortgage payment, it jumps to a debt of about $90,000. $460. So uh, that's why we're trying to address this is so you know you could potentially be uh, debt free at a younger age. That's that's the idea here for you to be able to do. All right. Think about and then post up here some of the stuff that comes to mind. What type of expenses do you expect the need to budget for in the future? So uh, right now you have some I'm sure that come to mind, but beyond uh, you know, the current time period when you're on your own out of your parents' home and paying your own bills. What may be something you have to uh, budget for? All right, now we got some good ones here. So rent, food, insurance. Nice. All right, somebody's uh, thinking ahead. Bills in general, emergency funds just in case. Fuel, yeah, gas is probably one of the biggest expenses that you know, many of you have currently as well. Uh, taxes, heating and cooling bills, food and entertainment, nice. Utility bills, there you go. Okay, so you guys have a good concept, good grasp here of uh, stuff that you're going to need to be setting aside money for. All right, so you guys hit a lot of these, which is good. So utility bills, someone said that one. So electricity, gas, water, sewage, garbage, you know, th things that uh, you're going to have to continue to pay you know, month after month. Competitive service bills, this would be cell phones. I mean, there's all kinds of cell phone companies, and then each company has different uh, you know, options as far as plan goes. So that would be competitive service, internet, TV streaming. I mean, there is like, you got Hulu, you got YouTube TV, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus. I mean, there's all kinds of streaming services that are competing for you know, your money to, to buy on their platform. Uh, mortgage payment, you already said that. You could you know, potentially own your own home or, or rent. Uh, an auto payment, you could own your own vehicle or, or lease. There's you know, a lot of options that uh, you could go through. Food is another one that's going to be a variable expense. Uh, it's something you definitely need to budget for. Everybody's you know, got to eat, and depending on what you eat, it's, it's more or less expensive. Gas, we mentioned unexpected expenses. And this is something to keep in mind you know, when we start moving around the room. There might be an unexpected expense that comes up uh, that you needed to have set aside some money for. Investing and retiring, and we talked a little bit about that when we did our stock market game uh, with you know, how you could invest your money. And then child care is a big expense that uh, some of you in your life scenario will have. Uh, and in real life, you know, hopefully you guys are uh, blessed with children as well. All right.
Uh, entertainment, that's uh, depending on how much you go out or stay in. You know, there's uh, entertainment options. Vacation and travel, how extensive of a, of a vacation you're going to be on, uh, what you, you know, how you're going to approach that, how long, all those things. Gym memberships, I know just talking with some of you guys, you already have gym memberships, so you kind of understand the concept of that one. And then some other needs or wants, designer clothes, jewelry, golf carts. You know, there's all kinds of needs and wants that people will have. And then donating to charity, you know, nonprofit organizations tied to a church. There's, you know, all kinds of uh, optional charities that you could uh, give to that is beneficial and uh, something we're going to look for. All right. So based off of that, it's time to climb. So you're going to pick your character. And once you pick your character, uh, let's go, how about outer space right here? We're going to be in outer space. All right, so pick your character, and then we'll have five questions pertaining to budgeting before we break up here. Oh, there we go. A lot of penguins right away. All right, now the bears are taking over. So we have about three more. All right, here we go. All right, so let's jump in. Now this again, it's it's about the five, it's five questions, and it is about how if you get it correct or not, but also how quickly it'll it'll break you. So here we go. All right, according to financial experts, out of ten Americans, how many? will have some form of consumer debt. <coughs> All right, three, two, one. Let's see who's starting on top here. All right, Evan, nice. Riley, one, Alexan, round out the top four. Here we go. All right, second question. Which of the following is an example of an unexpected expense a person should save money in preparation for? It? So, unexpected expense. Some of the same names with Evan Riley Mason one <coughs> top four. Nice, we got a new new name in there. Which of these is most likely a want for a family living in Forsyth County, Georgia? Alright, so which is most likely a want? Not a need, but a want. And many of you may have this. There you go. So as nice as Netflix is, that's, that is still a want. All right, which of these is most likely a need for a 27-year-old living in coming Georgia? All right, although those are a nice pair of Jordans up there, you know, they may not be a need per se. Shoes, yes. $250 Jordans, uh, you know, maybe not. All right, last question. If you need to borrow money in the form of a loan, so this is up at our bank station, what should you expect to pay? This is a prior knowledge question here. So whether it's a, a home loan, an auto loan, a student loan, a personal loan, you're going to have to pay this. All right, interest. Yes, yeah, so O'Reilly, Evan, Juan, Mason, that's our top four. Well done, well done. All right, so not bad. Israel was in the top five. I like it. I like it. Okay. So what you're going to do, and this is uh, where it gets to be the, the exciting part here. All right. Uh, you're going to be given a job in a specific life scenario. So you might be married. You might be single. You might have kids. You might not. You might have two pets. You might not have any pets. Uh, you're going to use the monthly budget sheet that you'll have that you know we've kind of seen prior to. You'll have all of your monthly bills that'll be required. You got to pay those first. Like what you know, what do I? What's required of me to be able to keep the power on, keep the water on, you know, stay in my house? You got to pay all those. Then, if you have excess funds, which some of you will, depending on your uh, employment, you will divide those up into your other categories. 
Uh, so those are your variable expenses. And then we're going to go around and pay at each of our stations. All right. So this is where you can reach under your desk the moment you've all been waiting for, and you get a job, and you get some money. All right, so you open that up, and you will find your job at the top of the sheet, and you'll find a stack of cash. There you go. What you got? I said, seriously. Hey, web design. Yeah, you'd be good at that right there. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, what you get on the stack of cash over there? Yeah, okay. All right. Anesthesiologist. Yeah, you got to put some people to sleep before surgery. There you go. Yeah. Juan, you got a, you got a pretty good one right there. You got a pretty good one. Yes, yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. So now that you know your job, and you see your stack of cash. Uh, that's the exciting part here. Uh, you'll see at the top, uh, below your name, it will have a gross monthly income. All right. So the gross monthly income is the amount. It's like a salaried amount. So that, but that is not what you have in your hand because what you have is the net monthly income. So you have after taxes have been taken out because we have we you know discussed before that about fifteen percent is your you know state and federal income tax that's removed. Uh, you've got your uh, retirement in some of your specific scenarios, uh, but all of you will have Social Security taken out, uh, Medicare, Medicaid. So those are already taken out. So with your net pay, you'll start working down the list to see your life scenario. So if you have children, pay attention to the ages of those children, because if they're in if they're child care age, then you'll have to pay money in the child care category. Uh, if they're not, or you obviously if you don't have any children, uh, then you won't have to allocate any funds to childcare, uh, but some of you might. So you'll work down. Then when you get to the bottom, those are all your life options. So it asks you to circle one, and you can write on these, feel free. You're going to circle if you, you know, want to pay the extra money for a larger house, or circle that you are going to save a little money by getting a smaller house, or maybe you're going to rent. You, those are all options. Uh, your car, you can lease it. And pay a little less, or you can, you know, buy it, and it, it'd be yours, and you got to pay a little more each month. All right, so start working down your list, and then the back sheet is your budget sheet, and you'll work your way through those. All right, so we've got uh, 15 minutes to budget, and then we'll start moving around. All right, and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Okay. So income, that's that's the uh, ginormous monthly amount right there. Yeah. You got the highest paying job in here, Juan. Yeah. That's going to be real life. Yeah, I know. I don't doubt that. All right. That'll be, you got to like budget this first because you'll have to add up this and the variable, which for you, you will have money over, like you'll have extra to divide up into entertainment, dining, shopping, you know, medical emergency, all that stuff. But the ones you have to do first is your fixed expenses, grocery, gas then everything else is, is kind of optional in the sense of where you put the money. Yes. So you, let's see, how many? You're married, three kids. All right, so you got four plus you. So you have the 100, 50, 50, yeah, you, got, you did it right, $300, and that's, you'd come over here where it says electricity, right, $300. Uh, number three, it looks like, yep. And then you'll do the same thing with natural gas, water, sewer. You just kind of work your way down. Yes, yeah, because those are uh, depending on lifestyle and how much you know money that you have to do. Some of the, like some people will have to put zero in vacation because they won't just won't be able to afford it. Uh, but in your case, you'll be fine. <laughs> but when it comes to charitable donations, you know you'll be available to help people. Right there, you go. Yeah. All right, so for life insurance premium, for those of you who are down to that category, life insurance premium, we're just doing a set $10 for life insurance premium. And then for uh, garbage removal, we're just doing a set $20. Because uh, that's, you know, $20, $25 is usually garbage and recycle removal uh, approximately. So we'll do $10 for life insurance premium for you guys, you're young, uh, and then $20 for garbage removal. All right, so those of you who are at our workstations, we have a couple finishing up, so they're going to start heading your way to make their payments. All right, you got somebody for a customer. Thank you for change, yeah.
I got so for electricity I got two fifty. Natural gas, I got 110. No, I thought they were going to be in your waist. My mortgage is 1700 So I'm going to give you $2,000. South of 700 Oh, wait, I don't need it. For a mortgage, 1700 Uh, Yeah, 1700 Wait, so you want $40? No, just put this in. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, I think it's uh, 50 for the internet. Yep. And then, I think it's 120 for the cell phone expenses. Alright, so that's 184. There you go, bro. Alright, man. So, in life, uh, you know, we budget the best that we can, and we try to make sure that, you know, we prepare for unexpected events. One of those just came up. So if you were one that circled a homeowner, whether it was the larger home or the smaller home, so if you did not pick renting, you circled <coughs> a homeowner, your heating and air just went out. And that is a very expensive uh, replacement. So uh, it, whether it's 100 degrees in July or like, you know, this Sunday where it might snow like, you know, five inches maybe, uh, you got to have that replaced and it's $5,000. It, no, and that is, you know, not far-fetched. Uh, so if you chose that one, in just a moment, you're going to need to figure out a way to pay the bank. Uh, if you chose to rent, uh, then you do not have like, you know, the, it went out, it, you're fine if you rented, but you decided to just bite right into a Jolly Rancher. You're just like, ah, right up front. And you chipped your tooth, so you got to go to the dentist, and you got to pay him $600, which is, uh, you know, kind of on the low end for a chipped tooth. But uh, so take a minute, figure out how you're going to do that. Did you put money in your uh, unexpected, you know, life events account? Or if there was nothing in there, you got it. okay, do I have the money in savings? Or am I going to have to take out a loan to pay for my heating and air. All right, so look at your budget, decide the way to do that, and then you can head to the bank to make a payment. You can, the service station will be uh, accepting the dentist bills back there. All right, so you guys see how you're gonna pay it and then go to either location. Are you able to pay it? All right, thankfully though, you've got $4,000 in savings, right? Okay, so you could, did you rent or did you uh, buy? <laughs> You bought? Okay, so you can use the 4000 and then you'll need 1000 more from the bank. So just, you can go to the bank and say, hey, you know, I need $1,000, and then you can just pay that, and then you'll be all set. Yep. All right, so did you have the money? No? Okay, so you need $2,500? All right, so you can go up to the bank and say, hey, may I take out a loan for $2,500? And then he'll write you down. All right, so we have uh, another option, and this is optional because when you donate to charity, that is something that uh, is going to be optional. So a local charity that helps provide meals for children is interested if you will donate money. So they want to know, will you be able to help? And that amount is anything that you feel like you are willing to help this local charity uh, to you know, provide meals for children that don't have it. Then you can go to, in this case, we'll do the bank, uh, but the bank will accept that payment. Uh, so those of you who are interested in doing that in just a minute, you can do that. But we do have some breaking news. We have a citizen in the room that just won the Mega Million jackpot. Yes, indeed. Yep. And it is a Mr. Uh, Zach Payne. Yes, sir. He won the Mega Million jackpot. Well done. Yes. All right. So you, you got to help him out, though. He was, he was struggling along to make his payments. You know, he uh, has been working really hard. He started working two jobs just to be able to, you know, survive. But now he won, and he, it was one ticket. He just, won, he just got one time, and he won. All right, so should he accept a one-time lump sum payment of $15 million, or should he take 25 yearly installments of a total of $25 million, so $1 million a year for 25 years, or should he take $15 million up front? What do you guys think would be the best life advice for this man working two jobs, struggling his way through life? 
All right, what do you think here? What you got? 25 million? Okay, so we have one student who said for sure uh, 25 million, 1 million for 25 years. Anybody else think he should take the lump sum? No? What might be an advantage of taking the lump sum? Okay, so you got it right away. And then what could you do with it that might potentially what? Invest. Oh, okay. So if you took the lump sum and you are smart with it, you could invest and maybe make more than the $25 million over 25 years. Uh, but, you know, that's, it's a decision that you're going to have to make. All right, so what is your decision based off of some of the advice given in your class? Option B? Okay, so you would say, look, I'll get the million now, I'll pay off my bills, and then I'll, I'm going to have a million for the next 25 years after that. Okay, all right, so option B, so you may go see the bank, and in this case, the bank will fund you your $1 million. All right, and then the rest of you that wanted to provide charity, hey, did you want to provide any uh, meals for charity while well, you're... Uh, well, you're there now? Okay, you'll consider it. Okay, so the rest of you, if you would like to uh, provide meals for charity, you can set aside some money to do so. Yeah, just get, <laughs> you're good, you're fine. We'll, uh, we're about to wrap it up. So you got, just know on your budget sheet, you got a million dollars, you know, right there. All right, so back to your Nearpod last uh, slide here for the day. All right, yeah, you don't, you're good, you're good right now, you're fine. All right, so uh, what we want to see here, so based off of today's real life budget, so some of you had uh, difficult life circumstances that made it a challenge to just pay one month worth of bills. Some of you uh, had maybe a little bit easier of a time and you were able to allocate those funds into different categories. But based <laughs> off of that, <laughs> uh, we're seeing that being alive is expensive. Yes, all right, that's a good first one right there. All right, so what else would be some of the things that uh, you guys learned from your real life circumstance? So like your specific ones or the ones around you that may be beneficial to carry out uh, once you guys graduate high school. All right, having a family is expensive, okay? So those of you, there were some of you out there with like four and five kids. That, you know, that adds up when it comes to the grocery bill and electricity and water and all that. All right, a lot of unexpected things can pop up in life, yes? All right, uh, don't mistake thousands for hundreds, okay? That does occasionally happen, yes? Yeah, not what you want to do. All right, let's see. If you, even if you do make large sums of money, it can be still challenging. Yes, all right, so it, what, what I'm seeing here as a theme is uh, regardless of your life circumstance, that if you are able to try to budget, you know, try to categorize, st some things do still come up, but if you can prepare for it to the best of your ability, that's really helpful. Uh, and then some of you kept having to go to the bank and take out loan after loan uh, for these life events or just to make it. Uh, so that is something where you can kind of consider, all right, so the job that I was assigned in this case, is that a job that I would want to pursue? Uh, and what would be the, you know, the benefit analysis, whether it's cost benefit or whether it's, you know, helping people out and, and kind of going that route. All right. So thank you, guys. That is it for today. I'm going to leave you with Dave Ramsey. Successful people have written goals. Simply put, a monthly budget is your monthly goal. It wouldn't make sense to build a house without blueprints, nor does it make sense to spend your life's earnings without a plan. All right, and that's it for today. Good job, guys. All right, so if you will take your excess cash... Excess.